The last time I used a laser cutter, I was 15 years old and it was for a project at school. This is what I made. It's definitely not the most intricate or complicated design, but I remember being pretty happy with it at the time. However, it's fair to say that when it comes to laser engravers, I'm a little bit out of touch. So, when Algo Laser reached out and said to me that they want to send me their new Pixie laser engraver, I was really keen to give it a go. And if you've seen any of my other videos, you'll know that I love 3D printing and just making things in general. So the chance to add another tool to the collection was one that I was really up for. Right, so whilst I'm getting this unboxed, let's get the boring bits out of the way. Algolaser sent me this product, but they're not seeing this video before anyone else, nor do they have any control over what's in it. There's an affiliate link in the description below which helps support the channel at no extra cost to you. And there's a copy of my sponsorship policy on my website. When you first open the box, <coughs> when you first open the box, you will find a user manual, a protective shield that sits on top of the laser to protect your eyes, and a stylus that comes in really handy for interacting with the touchscreen. And then after removing a lot of foam, you'll find a little goodie bag that contains some grease and some test material to start engraving on. It also comes with a duct that attaches to the back of the engraver to get rid of any fumes. And at first glance, I gotta say I'm loving the way this thing is looking. I love the red and black combination, it's got a really modern minimalist design and it's actually really small. You can see it up here against my Prusa Mark IV as a comparison. At the back of the engraver you've got all of your main ports, the place to connect the ducts and you've also got thumb screws so you can manually adjust the height if you want to engrave taller objects. And so after getting the duct fitted, it's time to power this thing on and see what's, see what it's all. And so, after fitting the duct, it was time to get this thing hooked up and powered on and see what it was all about. Once the engraver's powered up, you're met with a welcome screen and then you have a chance to connect it to your Wi-Fi. Immediately I was informed that there's a new firmware available so I got started by updating that first. So here's the main home screen and I'll just give you guys a quick rundown as to what all the different menus contain. First up you've got the settings menu which contains all the usual things you'd expect to find in a machine like this. I'm not going to go through each section that would be a little bit tiring but it's all the basics. The engraver comes with some demonstration projects that you can try and that's under the projects tab. It comes with an SD card and it's got some built into its own memory. One of the coolest features of this engraver in my opinion is the ability to just type something on the screen and have it engraved. This feature is called Algo Type and it's really straightforward. You select the menu, you type what you want it to be engraved and then it'll go ahead and do just that and we'll come back to this later. But honestly it's a pretty cool feature. And similar to Algo Type, you have Algo Draw, which is where you can actually draw on the screen using the stylus that they send, and that will that will get engraved into your material of choice. I thought that was really awesome, and going forward, that's something I'm looking forward to playing about more with. 
So this is how you level or position the laser so that it's got the correct Z height from whatever you're printing or engraving on rather. So if I use, so if we use this bit of wood as an example, you lay it on the, on the bed and then you use this little hammer that comes along in the kit. On the top of the engraver head, there's a little thumb screw that will raise it and lower it depending on how you turn it. So you can see the, the head going up. You put the little hammer, rest on the material that you're engraving and then lower the module so that you're able to get that hammer in and out without having to struggle too much, nor is it too loose. So that's how you do it. It's a, obviously a little bit of a basic rudimentary system, but it's pretty effective. Um, I'm sure some more upmarket engravers have auto leveling and things, but for now this works pretty well. With everything set up, I was ready to get engraving. So I loaded up one of the demo projects on the engraver and set down some birch plywood to get engraved. And this is where I made my first mistake because based on the settings I had given, the laser blitzed through the birch plywood and then I spent some time trying to figure out why. And this had turned out this is what happened. So this is something I didn't realize, but you actually have to tell the engraver the power of the laser that it comes with. Algo Laser sent me a 10 watt version, but by default the engraver thinks it's set to 3 watts, so you have to change that before you start engraving, otherwise you will just rip through what's, what, whatever you're engraving onto. Once I had made that correction, I restarted that project and I was really happy with the way this turned out. Next up, I wanted to test out the Algo Type feature, so I selected that typed in the text that I wanted to print out and then I set down some more birch plywood to get engraved on. And again, the little guy delivered. I got nice crisp text, really straightforward to do it, and it turned over pretty quickly. And again, this little guy delivered. I got nice crisp text, exactly what I wanted, and it did it fairly quickly as well. And then the last native feature to test was Algo Sketch, which I mentioned earlier is where you can actually draw on the screen and it'll engrave what you draw. And as happy as I was with all the built-in features this engraver comes with, I was ready to start engraving some of my own designs. First I did some research as to what are the best softwares to use when you're using a laser engraver, and it turns out this software called Lightburn was pretty much the unanimous favourite, so I went ahead and downloaded that. Luckily they have a free trial so I was able to give it a go without having to pay for it. And to connect to the engraver it's not immediately obvious how to do it so follow along these steps and then you should be able to start talking between Lightburn and your engraver. And once the engraver was connected I downloaded this free SVG of a rocket, added some text and sent it off to the engraver to start production. And again, these engravings came out looking fantastic. 
I tried two different versions. The first one on the left there is really where it just draws the lines and even those came out really crisp. And the second version is where it basically fills the white space between the sets of lines. So it basically makes a more thicker outline and that looked really good as well. So I was really happy with that. I wanted to try a different material next. So I loaded up my logo as an SVG file and got it ready to engrave onto these metal business cards. And I was super happy with the way this turned out. Again, I did the inverted method where it only it sort of removed only the main parts around the logo. On the flip side, I did just a simple line engraving, which looked great, but not as good as the main part. And for my next test, my wife has wanted me to make some coasters for as long as I can remember. So I thought this would be a good chance to pick up some slate coasters from Amazon and engrave something on it to see how it turns out. And again, it came out looking really good. I'm really happy with the way this turned out, to be honest. It's I'm not sure if the details come through in camera, but this is it gets really fine margins on the letters and the numbers. So all in all, pretty impressed with this. And the way I've done this is that it actually engraved everything around the letters. So it leaves the letters looking a little bit dark and I think that looks pretty nice. So yeah, pretty, pretty impressed so far. And last but certainly not least, I bought a pack of these acrylic sheets from Amazon. And for this, I wanted to do something a little bit different. I wanted to see if rather than just engraving onto the acrylic, I can use this machine to actually cut out a shape. And it turns out you can. So I adjusted the settings and asked the machine to do multiple passes and eventually it actually cut out the shape of the acrylic that I had in mind. It's not perfect because you can tell the edges are really quite melted. I think maybe I did too many passes or had the temperature set too high. But I was pretty impressed by the, with the fact that I was able to do it. And then for good measure, I ended up doing a very simple engraving on the acrylic and it came out looking absolutely amazing. So now, let's go through what I feel are some of the pros and cons of this machine. To start off with, it's really easy to use and it's really intuitive. You can go from basically unboxing to have something engraving within a matter of minutes. So that's a definite plus for me. It's really easy to use and get going with. Secondly, this machine is really nice and compact. You saw earlier me comparing it to a Prusa Mark for us, which is a desktop 3D printer. So this laser engraver is perfect for people that might be a little bit tight on space or just want something pretty small and unassuming on their desk. So compactness, again, a definite thumbs up from me. And thirdly, some of the native features that it ships with, including algo type and algo sketch, I thought were really cool and fun to play with. So it makes it a little bit different to just a standard laser engraver with these features. And now some of the parts that I thought maybe weren't so good. Firstly, it's the build volume or the build space. With 100 mil in each direction, there's really only so much you can engrave. So ideally, I would have liked a slightly larger work area. And secondly, the way you have to measure and set the distance of the laser from what you're engraving is really sort of basic and archaic. So. I understand this is a budget laser engraver, so it's not going to have all the bells and whistles, but I think with the way technology is now, maybe it would have been a bit easier and a bit better from the user's perspective to have a better way of leveling things out. So for me, that was definitely a, a slight minus. And lastly, this thing is really good at making engravings. It's not so good at cutting, especially acrylic. So I didn't try it on wood, you can cut acrylic, but it doesn't do it very well because the edges are quite blobby and melted. So great for engraving, cutting, I'm not, I'm not so sure on. And that's going to wrap it up for this video, guys. Let me know what you think in the comments down below. Let me know if you have any ideas for what other tests I should do with this machine. But until then, I'll see you all next time.